Howdy y'all, it's Serena here from Spin and Die in Texas and we are finishing up our look at the starting instructions for these um, learn as you go crochet kits that are available on um, Amazon and things like that. We are comparing these to the brand standard which uh, for the purposes of this we are saying Woobles is the brand standard. Uh, if you look at the video that was released yesterday, it does show us going through the first steps for a Woobles Raccoon. We also did the first steps for a Cat Amigurumi and a Frog Amigurumi. And I feel like there was another one, but maybe not. I guess it was just those three. So then today we are going to do um, the B from this multi kit here. Um, and if you missed yesterday's video, uh, please go back and take a peek at it so you can get an idea of kind of what we're doing. But also, um, if you don't want to look at it right now, uh, these kits both have multiple projects within them. We're only going to do one project per kit. So for the crochet kit here, I'm going to do the B. This is a kit of dinosaur amigurumis, and I'm going to do a triceratops. Then the kit in the very back there is actually a granny square um, tote bag kit. And the reason why we've added that in here is because it is also a learning, um, learn how to crochet kit, but it does a granny stitch. And uh, so I wanted to try that against the Amigurumis to see if maybe that's a little bit easier from a new person learning crochet uh, than maybe some of these work it in the round and increase and decrease and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, granny squares tend to be very straightforward. So we are going to show just the first two to three steps of each of these kits and um, go through how the instructions are written and that kind of thing, then I will off camera finish all six of the projects and I will come back with a video next week talking about what went well, what didn't go well, and if I recommend any or all of or none of uh, these types of kits and then how they compare to the Woobles kit. So let's go ahead and jump in. We've got the crochet kit for beginners. Um, they do have step-by-step -step video tutorials available, but if I remember correctly, it does come with written instructions. Sorry, you can only see the video. Oh, let me turn the camera down so you guys get a better look. Looks like that should be pretty good. Ooh, hang on. There. Let's do that. That looks pretty good. Okay. So, we are once again working with a two and a half millimeter hook. That is what we have worked with for all of the um, kits so far. And I'm pulling out the B instructions. It looks like give me just a minute here. I'm sorry. There we go. Hope that wasn't too loud on camera. So each of the uh, little amigurumis that you can do comes with its own set of kits and we do also have one of these um, beginner guides in here as well. So also an option and it will show you and we went over this in the first video that came out last week, um, but it does give you basic instructions on how to um, how to do individual stitches that are going to be common in crochet, how to hold your hook, and those kind of things. So I'm pulling up the instructions for the B. Now, one thing I do notice with this kit, um, as with all of them so far except for the Woobles kit, it does not have a started piece for you. So we are going to make the B and we're going to make, we do have an option. We can do a yellow B or a pink B and I am gonna do that yellow B. So I'm gonna start with 
this yellow, which I will say on camera does look a lot more yellow than it looks in person. In person, it's a little, it's got a little bit more orange in it. Um, but we'll see how it looks when it's finished. Uh, now these do appear to be center pole balls. This is the first one that we've had that's set up as a center pole. I like that. These are wound very neatly, so they're going to work well as travel projects. Um, hang on. I'm sorry. The instructions on this one, if you do not remember from our first from our first video. The instructions on this one are really small and I have 40 year old eyes. So give me just a second here to take a peek. Okay. So this is worked in the round and it looks like we are going to do eight single crochets into a magic circle. Now this kit, without the video, and I do, I, I've discussed this before, but I'll say it again. I do think that having access to the instructions without the videos is very important because most people do not plan to crochet while sitting in front of the TV at home, although all of us end up doing it. Most of us will crochet, start to crochet because uh, maybe we travel a lot or sit at the doctor's office and waiting and that kind of thing. And when you have these instructions that are, one, two, three, okay. When you have these instructions that are only really available online, how are you going to learn that way? And so Woobles, was had a pretty egregious version of that and I will say this kit I'm gonna put right up there it does have a printed pattern but there is it is just a pattern there's no additional instruction there's nothing to direct you to um maybe a section in the quick start guide that you have or the beginner's guide that we have that it comes with it is just instructions. It doesn't even say make a magic circle. It just says round one, chain one, one chain, eight single crochet for a total of eight stitches. I'm assuming it's a magic circle because if not, I don't know what we're doing eight single crochets into, maybe into the chain one. That seems kind of weird. Um, so I'm doing it as a magic circle. <laughs> But there's nothing in the instructions that tells me to do that. I'm just going based off of what I know of crocheting, that usually we start with a magic circle. And this has worked in the round, so it probably starts with a magic circle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so yeah, so I can tell you right now, there are flaws to this system of having, even though we get the com combination of a video tutorial and written instructions. I'm still not seeing this one as being a super awesome system. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to count again. Sometimes when I talk, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're there. Sometimes when I talk, I forget the very last thing that I did. So we've got eight. I'm pulling it it does not say to connect, so I'm guessing we will be working in the round, which seems pretty consistent for amigurumis, um, which, again, I'm going to reiterate. I don't know if I say that word correctly, but I say it the way that my mouth is willing to move around all of those letters. Um, if there is a better way to pronounce it, I would love to know, so please um, feel free to drop a comment if there is a more appropriate way to be pronouncing amigurumi. Now, interesting. So it does not say that we should slip stitch, but the second step, which I said I would give two steps, I don't think that gives away any, uh, I don't think that gives away any intellectual property for these 
um, patterns just going over the first two steps because they're pretty standard. It's usually, it's a round and then an increase round. Um, so round one says one chain, eight single crochet for eight stitches. Okay, we've done that. I pulled it closed. Round two also says one chain, eight increase for 16 stitches. So if I have to chain one, that implies that we are not doing a continuous round. So I'm not gonna do a continuous round. It doesn't say to slip stitch though. Nope, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna follow the pattern exactly as it says. So it says one chain, eight single crochet. Then it says one chain increase. So we are going to chain one, done. And then we're gonna do two in every stitch. I was gonna correct it, but I just realized if you were learning, you wouldn't know how to correct it. So we're gonna do 16 around. Yarn is okay. It's very similar to the yarn from the last project uh, that we worked on yesterday, the frog. And so it is applied yarn and the singles are kind of thick, so and it's not twisted super tight, so splitting the yarn is going to be a very big possibility. I don't think that's so hot for beginners uh, because they either power through, like my nephew does, even when the yarn is split, um, or they get frustrated and will quit. So um, probably not the best yarn to start with, even if you were to go with applied yarn. I think there's better ones out on the market but they do give you lots of yarn so you can make lots of mistakes, I think, and still have plenty to at least complete a couple of the projects, even if you can't complete all of them. And the yarn is the appropriate size for the provided hook. Although I will say it is a little on the tight side. Now, I don't mind that um, because I tend to crochet a little bit tighter. Also, I think for amigurumi or anything really that's stuffed, uh, having a nice tight stitch is helpful to creating a smooth final product pro or final project, I should say. But um, I also don't mind working with real tight stitches. Some people will, and I think for beginners, it can be a little bit more difficult too. So just something to keep in mind of the flaws that we've discussed so far, I would say the pattern is the most egregious flaw of this kit. And um, the yarn and the, the tight stitches are minor flaws, maybe not even flaws, but personal taste. So how many stitches do I have? Because where did my... All right, hang on. Okay, I thought so. So I've got two more to do. 15 and 16. All right, so we got them in there. I did the chain one and I'm working in a continuous round. I am gonna drop a stitch marker in there because it might be a day or two before I get back to this one. I do have a rather long road trip planned for this weekend. So I'm hoping to be able to do, take several of these kits with me and kind of work on it because <laughs> despite the fact that he has no reason to dislike my driving, my husband might dislike my driving. And um, prefer to drive himself. So I get to go on long road trips and just crochet and play with yarn in the car while he drives. All right, so I've got my stitch marker in there. We have worked in the round. It is a nice flat round so far, which is interesting because we are doing a ball style um, head, which is what we're working on right now. Uh, however, in looking at the picture of the head, which, ooh, can we get it in there with just, okay. In looking at the picture of the head, it does look kind of flat on the bottom and then rounds up. So we might be working bottom to top. Again, it does not tell us that in the pattern. Um, 
which is a little disappointing, but we'll keep going and see what happens. Also, just as a reminder, and I probably should have done this for the video yesterday. Uh, hopefully I will think about it while I'm editing and go back and maybe add in a little, um, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like a little text or something on the video screen. But uh, let me pull up how much this kit was and then we'll move on to the next one. Come on, come on. My computer's running slow, very, very slow. I'm getting back there, I'm getting back there. Here we go. So this one, which ultimately there's four amigurumi that we can do. We are only working on the B, just as a reminder, $25.55 currently on Amazon. So that's a lot of money for, for instructions that are written um, kind of poorly if you do not have a strong base of crochet that you're coming from. So keep that in mind as we move forward with this project. We're going to set that one aside and we are going to move on to the next kit, which is the blue box. So it just says crochet box on the top. No images of which projects we are going to do, but it does have a label on the side that says, where's it at? Where's it at? Dinosaurs. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I promise it does say dinosaurs there. So this one I picked mainly for the rainbow yarn because I did really, really like that. Um, this kit on Amazon currently is $13.99, so not super expensive. It does come with a decent amount of yarn and is supposed to be, you are supposed to be able to complete three projects with this kit as it comes. Sorry for the crunching. Hang on one second. I'm looking for a hook. Oh, yay. I just dropped safety eyes everywhere. Well, hopefully I find them before the dogs do. Okay, ah, here. So these are the Amigurumi and this is the one that I'm going to do this little Triceratops because I think he's super cute. This one's really cute too. Um, th they're all adorable, come on. I mean, they're all adorable, but I would say this one translates the best as a, uh, what's it called? No, I forgot the name of the dinosaur. But this one translates best. I feel like these two, this could kind of be a pterodactyl, but maybe something else. I don't know. So I'm going to take this off camera so I can open up the instructions and see what we're looking at here. Interesting. Okay, it took me a minute to understand what I was reading here. But the heads of the dinosaur, which is the green one here, right? That green one. The heads of the dinosaur and the triceratops are the same. So we have one pattern that we can get two different designs out of, which I actually really like that system because it means that you're going to see how flexible a yarn design, a crochet pattern can be. So we are going to start again, just the first two rounds. Just to give us an idea, this does also come with a basic uh, kit or basic guide to crocheting. I'm going to move around the mess that I just made because once again, my video is getting long. I know I'm wordy, people. I do try. I really do. Oh, okay. Well, apparently we're going to do the dinosaur first because it does come pre-started. So, pulling this off and I'm looking at... Oh my God, this is on there tight. Okay. So, like the Woobles kit, this one feeds from the outside. I'm not a huge fan of that. I also think it kind of sets up um, people who are learning to crochet at a disadvantage because you kind of get wrong information. Most people who are crocheting a lot are going to work from the center pole or rewind their yarn. So same issue I have on this one that I've had on previous. 
We are working with a bigger hook here. This one is a three and a half millimeter instead of a two and a half. And in looking at the instructions, it says, the first round is in the middle of a ball of yarn. So I think that's saying, go ahead and start with this green color that we're gonna work with, but I'm just checking this blue just to make sure that they didn't start several. Okay, yeah, they didn't. So, oh my gosh, I'm making such a mess. So, I'm also gonna check the guide here just to see. It does have steps on how to make a magic ring. Um, it does explain right side and wrong side of the project. And it does give you an image that looks very similar to the magic ring here, but without so many stitch markers in it. Um, so you can start with this one where you don't have to start it off yourself, but they do give you the steps on how to um, do it on your own, which we did not get in the, which one, in the Woobles kit. Might have picked too many of these to start with because it's hard to remember all of them. So, I'm going to go in here. I'm gonna hook my yarn into my ring. Again, I cannot stress how much I love these rings enough. They are amazing. All right, so it says six single crochet into magic ring. That's already been done for us. We have six crochet. Mm. Oh, and there are video tutorial instructions as well, but we're gonna see if we would need those. So I've got my hook in there. And then it says the next thing we're going to do is increase 12 to 12 stitches. So we're gonna count this as the first round. So I am going to pull these stitch markers out I believe that these are very similar. Hang on one second. No, sorry. It's my dear, dear friend, Scam Likely. Um, he's been trying to connect with me now for a while. So anyway, um, I am gonna take the other two stitch markers out and they are just in there the same as the Woobles was to mark off so you can start identifying what a stitch looks like as you work through. But we know what stitches look like, so I am gonna go ahead and pop these out. Okay, pull this a little bit. There we go. All right, now I will say these started ones, they're knotted so that you can't so it doesn't come loose in transit, I guess, but I kind of hate it because it's huge. So I'm gonna, and it doesn't give any instructions to suggest, actually, so I'm not going to. It doesn't give any instructions to suggest that we are supposed to unknot this in any way. So hook went in and we are gonna start with round two, which says, six increased stitches. So we are going to do 12 stitches total, starting here. And it is single crochet still, so one. We are back to beginner yarn, which I have to say is very nice to use. Even as a seasoned crocheter, as somebody who loves spinning their own yarn, the whole nine yards, it is kind of nice to work with this um, beginner's yarn because it is just so easy to crochet with. So let me throw, yeah, I'm gonna throw this in that big loop. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. There we go. I just miscounted. And so then I guess the last one goes in here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30
And this is the last day that I will be using this tripod because it is hard for me to see the video and work down here as well. So I hope I'm keeping in frame. Okay, next one is just single crochet all the way around. So I'm gonna pop that stitch marker out and we're gonna put the single crochet in each stitch. So one. Okay. And that's why I don't like um, yarn feeding from the outside of the ball because now if it gets underneath the ball of yarn, then I have to stop and give it a tug so it flips over and it just gets very annoying. Okay. So this is what you do if you are like me and you forget to put your stitch markers in. And if you're looking at these kits to learn, um, I don't know that they'll share this little tip, but if you don't know where you're at, at the very beginning here, it's easy to open this up and look at the rows. And you can see here we have our center, the magic ring part, the six stitches that went in there. Here's where we'll run. I'm working on row two and it's not there. If I turn this a little bit and I get to here, we can see magic ring center, row one, row two. So that's an easy way to identify where you're at and where you need to get to. Um, if you're like me and have what I like to refer to a little bit as jelly brain, which means sometimes things just wiggle right on out of there. Okay, and so here I can see ex exactly where, now I'm center, one, two, center, one, two. So I'm done. Okay, so we are gonna set this aside. I am going to drop a stitch marker in there. I now have so many from buying all of these kits. I hope you guys like these videos because I am going to do a few more of them. I have some other ideas in mind some other kits that I have gotten access to. And honestly, some of these are so cute. I really wanted to know myself if they were worth it. So having the opportunity to find that out while putting out videos is really nice. So my so far thoughts on this one is, I do like that it comes with a started piece, but also provides instructions on how to do the magic ring without needing to go on a video. I the instructions themselves work across two different um, patterns, which I also like since working in the round has so many standard things in it when it comes to increasing, decreasing, that kind of thing. Uh, my, whoops, my dissatisfaction so far comes mainly with the way that that first pre-started piece is knotted together and so now we end up with kind of a big um, gap in the beginning there if you can see see that gap that's because that stitch was tied in so that's where we're at with that one I'm gonna set it aside and we are gonna do one last one today and then I'll oh, make sure that hook goes in there We're going to do the last one today, and that is going to be this granny square bag, which comes with a whole book, but you can see it's a basic um, granny square with four color changes, and it looks like four rows. Yeah, four rows. So take this off camera, take a peek, see what we got in the way of instruction. So this all, the guide and the pattern is all in the same booklet instead of having two separate booklets, which is nice because that's one less thing you have to keep track of. Um, 
If you are a crocheter, you should already be familiar with the granny stitch. If you are learning, I highly recommend learning the granny stitch, not just because um, it's traditional, because I don't always think that that's necessary to learn. Um, however, oh, I knocked the camera again. However, uh, granny squares are also very, very versatile, especially right now. They're having a moment. Um, I wish I could remember who it was that went on stage in a crochet granny square suit. I really need to look that up. I'll try and post a picture of it on my Instagram. Anyway, um, granny squares are super versatile. You can do clothes, you can, or granny stitch, I should say. You can do clothes, you can do um, blankets, of course, bags like we're gonna do today. I mean, just tons of stuff. You can even do little amigurumis. I've seen a few of them that are like granny stitched. Um, the other thing I really like about granny stitch is it naturally increases as part of the nature of the stitch and the pattern. And so you don't have to do as much counting. So if counting and working in the round is not something that um, you enjoy doing or seems very intimidating if you're trying to learn, Granny Square is a good place to start. So, Granny Stitches, I got a whole mess of yarn back here. Behind camera, you don't even wanna see what my house looks like right now. So, we are starting with green, according to the pattern. And these ones, I will say, are not wrapped super nice. Um, In fact, I probably could pull this out as a center pull, but I don't know that I want to because it looks like it might be kind of jammed up in there and I don't want to create a knot. So we're going to work from the outside. It did come with two different sized hooks, a three and a half millimeter and a four millimeter, and it wants us to start off with the four millimeter hook. So you are working with something bigger. I do think that helps a lot. And if you are somebody who has some, maybe some minor arthritis or anything like that, dexterity problems in your fingers, a larger hook with one of these comfort grips on it is going to be easier to manipulate than some of the smaller hooks that we've looked at in these kits. So, to start, we are going to chain four, which interestingly, it does not say how to attach the yarn <laughs> um, to your hook in the pattern, uh, which you think that it would just because beginners don't want to have to constantly be going back to that, the guide section but we are going to go ahead and, oh, that looks better on camera. Chain four and slip into the first stitch. This yarn is also applied yarn. Um, probably not that great for beginners. I think all of these yarns are the same exact brand because it is the same kind of thick singles applied loosely together, almost just laying next to each other, very little twist. Um, it does make for a soft stitch though. All right, so we've created the ring. Now we're on to round one. Step one, chain three. And then that's gonna count as our first double crochet. This is the first project, uh, kit that we've had that's working double crochets instead of singles, which is standard uh, for the granny stitch. Um, and those instructions are available in the guide in the book on how to do a double crochet. But now we're going to do one double crochet, which I just did. Um, It says to add a stitch marker, so we will go ahead and do that. It says, chain three counts as one double crochet, then work one double crochet into the ring. Join a stitch marker in the third chain, one double crochet. 
This forms the double crochet cluster, three double crochet as one double crochet cluster. All right, so the English is not great on it, I will be honest. I feel like they wrote the instructions one way and then tried to delete it to write them another way and kind of missed a sentence in there. So we end up with duplicate information and somehow also not quite enough information. What it says ultimately is that last sentence, three double crochets as one double crochet cluster. I think it's supposed to say is one double crochet cluster, um, but as still works, it still gets you there. Then it says to chain two, one, two, and do another three double crochet cluster into the center. I do like that the pattern that they defined double crochet cluster in the pattern instead of just in the guide, um, which makes sense because a cluster could be anything depending on the pattern that you're using. Uh, but I've noticed that some of the other instructions seem to kind of name things like that uh, without defining it, and this one does, which is nice. Um, it also breaks the roundup into multiple steps. So the first step was creating the first cluster. Second step is to complete, com complete, complete three more clusters of three double crochets and, a ch and two chain. So we've done one, we're going to do two, and then we'll do three. Cause it would, cause we did one and now we're doing three more. So that's two more double chain and one more. Now, step three says add two chain, which we will do right here. And then slip stitch into where we have our stitch marker, right? here. Wait, I didn't get the other side. Hang on. I generally do not use stitch markers for this exact reason because then they tend to throw off my hook a little bit. So give me just a second to get this in there. There we go. And we have Did it pull through? Yes, it did. We have slip stitched. And then it says to fasten off, which the steps are in the guide, and cut. Give me just a second. This is going to be loud. I got to open these scissors. All right, now for anyone that watched my Create Kits video, which got me on this kick of kits, um, I will say these scissors, nice and sharp, cut just fine, unlike those Create Kit scissors, okay? So, pop that one off. That was round one. We've got our nice little square. Came out pretty good based on the instructions, although the instructions were not perfect. And... Now we are switching to, they call this white. This is not white. It's tan. It's maybe cappuccino. It's got some serious browns in it. Um, but I guess we can give them some creative license on that one. So it says round two. We will be working in in 
interesting. It says, with color white, you will be working out of the chain one spaces between the double crochet for this round. Now here's the problem. We didn't do chain one spaces. We did chain two spaces. So that's a little bit annoying because if you are new to this, you that is gonna throw you off for sure. For sure, for sure. But we will continue on because we're going to assume that eventually somebody that was new at this would be able to make that leap and say, oh, they meant the chain two spaces. So we're gonna join the new color by making a secure knot close to the stitches. Huh? Join in your new color by making a secure knot close to the stitches. Insert the hook through the nearest chain one space. Okay. Okay, things just got interesting. A secure knot. All right, I'm gonna pull this through and I am going to make a secure knot close to the stitches. I mean, I guess this is close, right? Like it's it's in there. All right, and I have securely knotted it. Oh, and you can kind of see because it's coming apart on the end there. See how those plies are just like these real big kind of clunky things? I don't know. Not my favorite. It's a five ply. It is very soft though. All right, so I have securely knotted it for reason, reasons I can't fathom. And now I'm going to insert my hook through the nearest chain one space of the previous round and draw the new color through to the front. Then, there are pictures associated with this on the video, by the way. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, in the book, by the way. Then, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Uh, count as one triple or treble crochet then two double crochet in the same space. This forms a double crochet cr cluster. All right, so on the ranking of these kits, this one, despite the fact that it's doing, or it's, it's teaching one of the, I don't wanna say basic, that's inappropriate, but one of the most common crochet patterns, which is the granny stitch, the granny square, um, the instructions are downright baffling because it's just poorly written, I think. So first of all, why do we tie the yarn to the project? That doesn't even make sense when there are much easier um, and cleaner ways to make connections. And for this granny square at four rounds per, you're gonna have just so many knots. I don't understand that. Then we also have a lot of misspellings. We talked about the one for round one where it seemed to just kind of meander a little bit, like they tried to rewrite it but forgot to delete everything. And then now it's saying that the first chain three counts as a TR, which would be a treble crochet or a triple crochet, depending on where you're from or who taught you. Um, but then it says that we're creating a double crochet cluster which we've done, but that would throw you off like crazy if you didn't know what you were doing, um, or we're trying to learn, I should say. Anyway, we're going to keep going. So now we're gonna chain two, and we are going to three double crochet into the same space. It's also weird, but sure, it's not as weird as the rest of it. So we're gonna do another crochet cluster 
which is three. Then it says that step three into the next space between double crochet clusters, chain two, double crochet th three, repeat two times. Into the next space between the double crochet cluster, it says chain two. Well, that is just, okay, so they wrote it backwards. You are going to end up with something ridiculous here because if I chain two and then do three double crochets, and then chain two, and then do three double crochets because it does say repeat it two times. This is what we have. I mean, it, it looks like Mickey Mouse ears. If Mickey Mouse got drunk. Oh, that's weird. All right, we're gonna keep going. We haven't even finished round two yet. Uh, so, repeat. So step five is repeat, chain two, double crochet three, two more times working your way around the circle, which is actually a square, making a total of eight double crochet clusters. Are you kidding me? Okay, so the instruction said, into the next space between chain two, one, then one two three You hear that sigh? That is the sigh of aggravation. Because now, because the thing is, I am not being, I'm not trying to be tedious, but the initial instruction says, into the next space between double crochet cluster, chain two, double crochet three, repeat two times. Then the following step says, follow step four. Until you have eight double crochet clusters. Oh, but okay, hang on. It says, follow step four between the asterisk. And the asterisk just says, chain two. So, hang on. We're going to pull that out. Oh, great. See, I talk too much. This video got long again. Sorry, but stick it out with me just till we finish this round. It's the last one. All right. Okay, so then it just says repeat between the asterisks two more times. So the asterisk just says chain two, double crochet three. chain two. So we can do it the right way on the other ones. It's just that one instruction that's weird and it's gonna mess us up because now we don't have a square. We have, I don't know, 
a multi-sided object. Or if you ask them a circle, which is also a problem because you're not making a circle. We don't call them granny circles, we call them granny squares. All right, so chain two. Double crochet cluster. Chain two, double crochet cluster. We now have eight double crochet clusters. Yoink. Officially. All right, now last step, chain two and make a slip stitch into the third chain from your initial cluster, which is right here. Now I will say this did also say to use stitch markers. I have never used a stitch marker on a granny square. I don't know why you would. I think it's a waste of a stitch marker. Um, but sure, why not? Then it says to finish off according to picture four. Uh, okay. It says chain two, slip stitch into third chain. Done that. Then it says finish off picture four. This is picture four. Do you know what they're talking about? I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna make a logical leap here and I'm gonna say they want me to cut it away because that's the only thing that makes sense because then we switch colors. Uh, Okay, so this is our first one. It's kind of a weird wonky heart due to poor instructions, which says words matter, people. Words matter. This makes no sense. It's terrible. It's a little bit disappointing to end on that note because I did, I did have high hopes for this bag. It's super cute. Um, so I think what I will do because I am going to put out a video next week with the projects finished. And I really want to finish this bag the way it's supposed to look. However, that's obviously not what we're going to get if we do all of the crocheted granny squares like this. So I think I will finish one square following the directions exactly as they are. And then I will finish the rest of the squares as a um, proper granny stitch. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, but that's not the instructions and that's not really fair as a um, true critique of this kit versus the other ones. And that's a fair argument to make. However, here's my thinking. My thinking is granny stitch is very common and you could go online right now and probably find I don't know, ballpark estimate, 5 billion videos and tutorials and written instructions on how to do a granny square. So if you were brand new at this and you ended up with this, knowing that it's supposed to be a square, cause that's the name, granny square bag. The first thing you would do is look for outside guidance and explanation. So while yes, it may be a little bit going against what the actual instructions say. I think it's fair to say somebody would end up with this, figure out the mistake in the instructions and go back and do the rest of them the proper way. So that's what we're gonna do as well. I will be back next week with hopefully six completed projects. Um, and we'll see how these turn out. I have high hopes for some. Um, I think the Woobles one is going to come out okay. I do have high hopes for um, the cat as well. 
Uh, but we'll see how everything goes. I'm excited on this journey. I hope you guys are too. I think after I finish this little series, then I'm going to probably do some uh, tufting or weaving videos. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's another reason to like and subscribe the page or the channel and go and follow me on Instagram at Spin and Die in Texas so that you can find out when I have new videos posted and kind of see what I'm working on. But I will talk to you guys next week. I hope you are having some serious fun with yarn this week and we'll see you soon. Bye.